Hey everyone, uh, I'm going to try my best to explain how charting works for Rock Band and Guitar Hero. So when it comes to charting for Rock Band, most people want you know full band experiences. So you're going to focus on the guitars, drums, uh, bass, vocals, and keyboard. Now, uh, the current game Rock Band 4 does not uh, support keys uh, as a separate instrument anymore, so that just focuses on guitar, bass, drums, and vocals. So, but luckily we can make customs for Rock Band 3, which was the first and only game really to support keys. And Face Shift um, supports keys as well, which is a free to play game. You can find them on their website. And, you know, we're just gonna cover right now uh, the guitar and bass portions. So what we're looking at right here is the finished project of Chronostasis and Reaper. Reaper is a MIDI editing program and you can do so much with it, but right now uh, we're not making MIDI, we're kind of using MIDI to chart for the game. And the game uses MIDI notes uh, for the game. As you can see here in the preview, which is custom made by Harmonix, um, you can see a little preview of what it would look like in the game. And right here, hopefully you can see that, but hope right here is basically a inserted text file of uh, the different difficulties for uh, the guitar instrument. Down here, it goes from easy, medium, hard to expert. When you're first starting to chart a song, you want to focus on expert mode because that's the highest difficulty, which means that is the most accurate that you're going to try to make it. So the most accurate chart is going to be on the expert. So what you see right here is a Guitar Hero controller. These were made by Activision and Neversoft way back in the day. Um, they no longer make these anymore uh, because the game has kind of officially died off and uh, you know they don't make official games anymore. Harmonix still supports uh, the game series with Rock Band 4 and you know you'll they make instrument guitars like these. It's uh, vastly vastly different in style but you'll see most people have a guitar like this with the more colorful buttons and smaller looking design. Any uh, notes that are played at frets up here are low toned and any notes that are played more up the fretboard are higher notes, or higher tone notes. So whenever you chart a song and the lowest note is played, you want to start with green, and then any notes higher than that will go up to orange. Right here, I'll just play an example. As you saw right there, all the main strumming notes were being played at lower tone, so all the notes were green, and all the notes were that you know you could audibly hear that were going bloop 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 bloop. You know they were playing up here, so it's very easy under to understand. It may look hard, it is hard, but it is very very easy to understand uh, once you you know kind of get an understanding of you know how that works. Since I have my drum kit with me, I might as well just go over it really, really quickly. Um, but drums, uh, this is a basic drum kit. Uh, this is the Rock Band 4 one. You can't use it on Rock Band 3, but you know the Rock Band 3 drum kit is pretty much the same. But this is a pro kit. Um, when you have the pro kit, you have access to use cymbals. This is a yellow one, which is the hi-hat. This is the open hat, and this is a crash, usually. Uh, sometimes you have to kind of mix it up a little depending on the song, but that's generally the idea with those. And these are the pads. Red is usually the snare, and uh, yellow, blue, and green are uh, the tom pads. And if you don't have these cymbals, they're not required, but if you don't have them, um, they will play pretty much normally the same way. Um, but when it comes to pro drums, you'll see... Uh, symbols, uh, which are these disc looking ones, um, you'll see the yellow and green disc looking notes, which will be like that with the kick, 
the kick notes are always the orange lines on the highway. So you'll be like, bah, easy. And then uh, you'll see the brick notes, which are the pad notes. So you'll be hitting yellow and green. And then after that, you'll be hitting yellow, snare, you know, bah, bah, bah. you know, you'll be hitting that pattern. I'm not very good at drums, <laughs> but that's a basic understanding of how the rock band drums work. When you don't have those symbols, it will look like that. You'll see just break notes and you'll only hit these kind of notes. Normally when you chart a song, you want to have the stems and having stems is really, really difficult to come by, especially legally. <laughs> um, but normally you'll have stems uh, for each of the guitar, uh, bass, drums, vocals, keys, any individual track that was used in the song, you'll normally have access to and you can use to chart the song more accurately. So what you see right here is a work in progress uh, project of Deus Ex Machina. It's nearly done. Um, I just got to fine tune some things. I got to work on the animations and the vocals and everything for the rock band version of the chart. But essentially it's pretty much nearly done. And this is what it looks like so far. Uh, let me grab my thingy over here. So right here is a good example of what I need to do to change a few things uh, from the raw MIDI that Karu-san uh, gave me to what it looks like now. So this is what I changed it to, but this is what it originally looked like. Let me make this bigger. So I have to basically translate this this huge you know spread out midi into five lanes and i also have to change the pattern so it fits more appropriately so when you zoom in on this midi you'll see that you know you see one two three four five and it goes back down and goes up the same amount of notes and now you see there's five lanes here five lanes of notes so you would think oh just make it zigzag all across but that's where it comes to you know a little bit of creative freedom but also um, making sense for the player to realize he's hitting different notes uh, in the section as you can see the MIDI notes even though they're all going in a zigzag they're all in five lanes they also change tone a bit this one's a little lower than that one because the, the tone of the guitar goes a little bit higher, then it goes back down, then goes up, then down, then up, then down again. It kind of, it changes uh, pitch, changes tone, so you have to account for that. So you have to change uh, the pattern a little bit to fit uh, what you're hearing as well. Otherwise, you're just going to get zigzags all across the screen, and you're just going to be hitting the same thing over and over again. So you have to make some creative freedom changes and to make it make more sense for the player so as you saw i changed that pattern right here to this very tiny but it fits within this five lane uh section for the expert guitar and here's what it looks like I also have a similar process when it comes to drums, but thankfully Cardosan has provided me the drum map so I know which MIDI notes of the drums go to, you know, which spot properly. As you can see here, you can see this is what I have in my own project for the expert chart. You know, these notes are the kick notes, and then expert red, yellow, blue, green, and then I have different other notes changing to whether or not they are the, the pad notes, the toms, or whether or not they're the cymbals, crashes, open hats, whatever. It's, you know, it's easy to understand once you kind of fiddle around with this a little bit more, but very, very basic stuff. 
but I have basically have to turn this giant MIDI. These are all different, you know, the MIDI notes. This is the raw MIDI just of everything. This is the raw MIDI of the drums. I basically have to take all of these notes, find out which note is which part of the drum kit, and put them into place here in this tiny, tiny five lane <laughs> of a mess. Uh, and then I put them into lower difficulties down here. And by the end of it, it'll look something like this. Something like that. It's still a work in progress. Um, I might change a few notes here and there, but overall it's going to look like that in the game. I'd like to thank Kardosan and Emisan of Release Hallucination for sending me all the files that I needed to chart these more accurately, because without them, I don't think I'd be able to make these full band. <laughs> it takes a lot of work. I also hope that you guys are excited because I got new content coming your way and it is Imperfection of Imaginary Number. It is uh, Release Hallucination's most recent album, and the full album is going to be full band charted, coming your way to Rock Band and Clone Hero. The release of the album chart will be sometime in 2020, but I'm going to take my time with it. I'm going to make sure I get everything right, and I just hope that you guys will enjoy it when it does come out. So see you then, and I hope you have a wonderful day.